Alhamdulillah <coughs> for the blessed month of Muharram or Haram and that Allah dress us and bless us from the immensities of the opening of our hijrah and the opening of our migration from badness to goodness and to the oceans of Allah's Divine Rahmah and mercy, this ishq and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad InshaAllah we talked last night on these subjects and the realities that we talked about and for the last week or so on the ocean of humility and istighfar and the ocean of entering into these Bab rahmah wa Bab tawbah the whole of Muharram is the reality of entering into Allah's oceans of repentance. And as a result of that ocean of repentance and taking a life based on humility that to lower oneself and learn how to efface oneself so that Allah's ridha and satisfaction to dress the servant, bless the servant and that the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah is an immense ocean of blessings. One whom understands it based on their humility and asking for forgiveness in this gate of Muharram becomes the next 11 months of journeying into that ocean, into that reality. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us from the immensities of its light and its blessings and that to continuously take a path in which we meditate and contemplate that reality that there is no way to La ilaha illallah and not in its way of marifah and all its realities without being in the ocean and the love of Muhammadun Rasulullah And that's why it's a path of humility that when a, a scholar or somebody whom is trying to teach the religion or a king that you know the, the, that part of the world they have kings. And if the king was to be asked that, you're a king, they say, yes, then who is your lord? Who's your king? And if they were to answer that, Allah is my king. So then where does Muhammadun Rasulullah fit with your understanding? And that's why the ocean of ignorance and the ocean of arrogance and the oceans of distance from the reality. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. of Allah because of the, the, the arrogance of people and their lack of common sense that Shah and Shah, the king of all kings means that is Muhammadun Rasulullah Even a modern day monarch who tried to call himself Shah and Shah, Allah immediately took him down and threw him to the ground and he couldn't even find a, a, a plane to a location to land his plane. It's not a title for anyone because the king of all kings is Sayyidina Muhammad Means the izza and might that Allah gives to every sovereign and malik, it's a power from the oceans and the power and the kingdom of Muhammadun Rasulullah so means that you can see the danger of how, how arrogance will breed in a completely wrong understanding within themselves and within their faith. And such a simple question that if you'd ask these kings, who do you think is your king? When their arrogance is to immediately think that only above them is Allah 
and that's immensely wrong. So everybody's the king of their home and if in your home you think like that means then that becomes the danger of an ocean of ignorance. Means that we are nothing, we are servants of Allah and Allah has placed upon us a king, Malik al-Aziz whom Allah has supported with Sifat al-Aziz that everything comes to that reality and nothing can harm that reality, nothing can cannot let something come to it. Sifat al-Aziz means Allah's might and majesty is a complete support of that reality. And when that's understood by the servant in Muharram that, Ya Rabbi I'm asking a way onto your king, the one whom is a sovereign king whom you have granted an authority and that you have granted an immense kingdom that I'm asking to be a subject to that kingdom and to be a servant within that kingdom. And that becomes a whole path of humility and, and good character. And then all the examples going forward in the next few months and in the tafsirs of the Qur'an and the understandings of holy hadith, its foundation is that, that we are nothing, we took a path of humility and that Allah grant us good character because through being humble and good character then that state of ignorance and pride inshaAllah to stay away from us. And that to ask always the nalain that we put upon and the holy sandal that we have an image of a holy sandal upon our turbans or we wear the nalain upon the turban was always a reminder that we're always asking Prophet that, keep my head under your holy feet. One the immense blessings that if you were to rest your holy feet upon my head the immense support and the immense ishq and love that would be dressing upon me and that that would be my safeguard from ever thinking that I could raise my head in that presence and in that reality. InshaAllah Allah dress us from the immensity of these blessings and that Allah inspire within our hearts to take a consistent path of muraqabah, tafakkur and contemplation and to make the connection into this ocean, into the world of lights and into the characters and the realities of light that Allah is, is asking from us. As a result those characters will then open for that reality and that dress to dress upon the soul. In the month that's coming this is the reality of the gate of nine and they were asking above for us to see is like a nine in front of us. And this is a gate towards the kingdom that requires tawbah, forgiveness and, and repentance, the gate of repentance. The next gate that is opening for us is the secret of eighteen. And that reality then is the opening of Allah's rahmah and mercy. And that that eighteen has to do with the month of safar and the tajalli of eminence and Allah's might and majesty that dresses the month of Safar and the souls then are being guided by Holy Qur'an and Surat Al-Kahf. And that becomes then the immense, immense understandings of our path. So it means that you can see the Qur'an is guiding, say, say where's the shaykh get this, why, why is the shaykh talking about this at this time? Because the Qur'an it's true guidance, Qur'an is guiding all of creation. But those whom Allah describes that there is no guidance except through Allah's guidance means that at every level there's a higher level of understanding and knowledge. These levels in which the Qur'an is taking us into its secret, into the secret chamber within the heart of Muhammadun Rasulullah then Surat Al-Kahf comes and begins to describe and show us by, by reading Surah Al-Kahf it's showing us how it's guiding us, all of its stories on its reality of guidance, the reality of how to accompany a guide, the reality of how to conduct oneself with a guide. So the immensity of Qur'an, its secret is then dressing and guiding the souls of people, that's what's the immense uh, astonishment. Somebody can talk and people say, oh he's making this up at this time and this month, they say, no it's the Qur'an. 
you read in the second month, the second lunar month is the reality of eighteen, read the eighteenth surah and the eighteenth surah is all about guidance and the mannerisms of guidance in which Sayyidina Khidr is teaching Nabi Musa one whom is the highest of prophecy from the six greatest prophets of Allah one whom speaks to Allah why Allah gave that example in Surah Al-Kahf? But because everybody has an arrogance, everybody says, oh no not me, my father is so and so, oh not me, my uncle is the, the head of all chistiya, not me, I'm like this, not me, I have a, a big company, I'm like this. And Allah says, well, just look, for everybody just to be equalized, I'm giving you example of a Prophet of Allah the greatest of the Prophets of Allah and one whom spoke with Allah And even then Allah said, even you speak with me, you need to accompany that guide. One whom attained a mercy and gives the criteria for the guide and then we taught him knowledges. Not that he attained knowledges and then we taught him mercy because it doesn't happen that way. If you attain knowledges you become angry and arrogant because you become intolerant of people, the likelihood of having mercy becomes now more difficult. Why then Allah is showing that from his elite, from the elite Sayyidina Khidr is salaam, Sayyidina Abbas Khidr is is of the elite guides. One whom is so elite in his guidance that he is beyond the veil of life and death. The one whom is, is eternally upon this earth and taking from his elite guides and guards the character that one, this guide attained a mercy. Means he was trained in the tarbiyah of rahmah. And as a result of the tarbiyah and the training of this guide, he has an immense mercy, a softness, a khushya within the heart that whatever done to that servant they've been crushed, they've been crushed, they've been crushed until they have an immense state of rahmah, mercy, kindness, love, good character. What Allah described of Prophet didn't describe that, oh mashaAllah you're of an amazing aqeedah but that you're amazing akhlaq khuluq, that you have an amazing character because Allah perfected and made that character, wanted to draw our attention to that, that the nobleness, the greatness of Prophet in Allah's eyes was the khuluq, khuluq al because that's what's important. Because Allah is the one whom bestows knowledge, He can bestow whatever He wants, He's not impressed by knowledge but the test on this earth was in the character that whom are going to send on a satanic planet and the shaitan is going to take the person, manipulate the person, agitate the person and that they're going to come out with a beautiful characteristic. Very few, would you say 99% of all people never will attain good characteristic. So it means this is the great accomplishment in our lives is the khuluq, that if the khuluq is good, the character is good, that whatever Allah puts you in a condition you come out polite, you come out good, you come out loving. Doesn't mean you're, 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 you're not going to be angry, of course you're going to be angry, doesn't mean you're not going to be hungry, you're not going to be sad, you're not going to be crying, you're not… Those are all the natural states of our existence that you cannot avoid any natural condition and state. If Allah throw you in an ocean of course you're going to drown and you're not going to be happy drowning. But the state of patience and calmness is what Allah is looking for. That whatever condition I put you in that you have to go upright back into a state of good khuluq and good character. If you have good character, ittaqullah. Wa alimukumullah Allah said, I can give you the bounty of my knowledges. This becomes then the immensity of the, the tariqah way and if that's not ingrained within the person then it's all based on I want to do this and I'll recite this, alright I'll do this and I want to read this and I want to do that. 
But then the real work and the hard work was never done. The real work and the hard work is the character, that to have good character, to be polite, to be kind, to be loving and that to be put through every type of extreme condition in which you remain in that state of goodness, that you regain yourself. And if you've seen like they have now these coast guard boats for people who don't know coast guard in different parts of the world but they have special military boats that they go out into the ocean and they design this boat for 100 foot waves, 50 foot waves because normal boat goes into a storm, one wave and the boat is gone, finished everybody on the boat is, is, is history. Now they design boats that have a top is covered, bottom is covered and it doesn't matter for the boat if it flips upside down immediately it flips right back up. And it says it can go through any type of storm. So when one looks at that fuluq, looks at that ship and that container then you begin to understand that Allah inspires Farsi, you have to be like that. Not that I'm always going to keep you on a lake, beautiful, sunny, everything going to be okay. I'm going to throw you into a storm and I want to see the character that you have within that storm. And that's why the conditioning, the training, the teaching that every moment our, of our life all of a sudden the sun goes away and here comes the storm and here comes the lightning, the thunder and Allah says, now we are observing is the character and the khuluq of that which can be granted sincerity. That's what we were talking last night that you knew can be a Muslim. Didn't mean that you now want to be crowned with the highest, means you merely accepted Islam. Then when Allah testing you to be a mu'min, that you want to be tested for the lights of faith, then you have to have the characteristics of a faith. And Mawlana Shaykh would teach that the mu'min cannot lie, can do many sins but he cannot lie. And then they came back and said, well, oh, well I know a lot of mu'mins and they lie a lot. Said, Mut this lie, not the dunya lie where you know how much you have in your pockets, oh no, no, I have nothing, I have nothing but you really have like five dollars there. The lie in which you promised Allah what did you promise on the day of promises to Allah that if I send you upon this earth, I am your Lord, these are the conditions, this is how you'll be tested and then you'll be returned to me when you said, bala, yes my Lord. Without a condition I am accepting whatever you have written for me and whatever you're asking of me. Then a mu'min is one who understood they made a promise to Allah they cannot come onto this earth and keep lying saying, I did not make that promise, I don't even know who you are. No, you're a liar, you know who we are and you know the promise that you made to Allah So the state of a mu'min is that they have to have a condition within their heart, a yaqeen in their faith that they know who they are, they know what they promised. They know that they promised to serve Allah serve Sayyidina Muhammad serve the path means then they uphold to their contract and they never negate it, they never try to burn it, they never try to extinguish it because at that time they become kasab. They become a servant whom Allah describes. What did He describe in Surah the rahman Now how many of the favours of your Lord are you denying to kaziban? But it's actually kazab that you're a liar. So how, how a, a mu'min could reach a state in which they understand what they promised Allah and, and Allah is giving a warning in Surat Al-Rahman because all tariqah souls they are mentioned in Surat Al-Rahman if they can understand who their reality is. And Surat Al-Rahman draws its secret into that, that I gave you Hawij and Rayhan and you are to kaziban. Do you understand the depth of that Hajji Shahid? Yeah, Allah said, do you hear this shaykh what he's talking about, big promises? And then Allah is scaring us with rayhan, with greens and sabzi, 
and uh, pomegranates and dates. I gave you these favors and you're denying my favors? If Allah is talking about you know the, the sabzi and, and uh, anar, <laughs> imagine what Allah is going to ask about the real favor. And that's why Surat Ar-Rahman is Allah drawing attention, oh look I really care about all the details in your life because I'm going to ask you about the rayhan I gave to you, I'm going to ask you about the fruit and the fruits and everything that you ate and how you weren't happy in life, you weren't content in life. That's what Surat Ar-Rahman is drawing us to, that Allah is going to ask about everything. So imagine then the big promises, so of course then a mu'min and muhsin is one whom they understood the covenant of Allah and they, they try their best on a daily basis to adhere to that covenant. And they never ask to break it, they never threaten to break it, all they ask is that I think death for me is better now. That if any moment in my life Ya Rabbi that I think I'm not able to continue my covenant, my state of death now is better. That let me to go while you're happy with me and that I'm within my covenant and my contract with you and that grant me a state of death. But why anyone would want to live on this earth having broken their contract with Allah, that time forward becomes a cursed time for that individual. So means then these are oceans of immense reality that the servant is entering in, their state of muhsin, they understood their covenant, they understood what Allah is asking from them. Their whole life is to adhere to that reality so that Allah grants them the light of faith. As a result of faith they uphold in every action and every breath of their life the covenant of Allah and their life is what? To achieve it. We gave that in the talks of the bayat. You can't even approach to achieve your covenant if you have not taken bayat because the bayat was about the covenant. The purpose you're taking of a hand which is the hand of Prophet which is the hand of Allah that you're taking the hand of Allah to fulfill your covenant with Allah Which covenant? The covenant from Allah Stubi Rabbikum wa qalu bala that I came onto this life that I would follow the guidance, I would be guided to complete what I have promised and that's why then the most powerful is then the bayat whom Allah guides to the tariqahs, the first thing they do they take the hand, Ya Rabbi I have completed my covenant with you that I have taken the hand and that your hand is on this hand and that I'm submitting myself to what you have ordered and commanded, bi izzatika sajidan wa bi qismatika radiyan, that I am in sujood to your might and to your majesty in every sujood, bi qismatika radiyan and that whatever you have written as a qismat for me that I am completely in rida and satisfaction with that. That your might and your majesty keeps me into sujood and that whatever you have written for me I am completely in rida and satisfaction of that. Means then that's the immensity of a mu'min in which they understood their contract and then mukhlis we described. Then Allah begin to dress the one whom is working through their covenant that you're going to need all your faculties to be dressed upon you. Because you cannot uphold your covenant with only one, your mouth, your covenant and your character, your taqwa has to be all five senses have to be under Allah's command and that you have to have a taqwa and consciousness of your hearing, you have to have a consciousness of your seeing and a taqwa, you have to have a consciousness of your breath and your nafas of what you're bringing of your sustenance to your soul. Consciousness of your touch and to your feel so that you're of a subtle nature, not a, a dead heart person that feels nothing. You have to work towards reviving the heart so that you feel the energy, that your heart has a khushya and softness and becomes like a 
uh, <coughs> instrument of Divine Grace. And Allah plays your heart like He plays a violin. He hits one chord and you begin to cry, He hit another chord you begin to laugh. Because the subtlety of the heart is so soft that it picks the vibrations from Allah and it plays the tune in which Allah is the composer. But that requires a subtlety and training and all of their khushya and, and softness within their heart. Allah then saying, all your senses have to have reached to sincerity, then that servant becomes dressed with mukhlas. As a result Allah becomes the wali of that individual. Well, Allah says, I am your protector. The one whom is a mukhlas, these are all in their degrees of sainthood. The one whom reached to be mukhlas, Allah is the wali, is the guard and the guardian of that servant in which I guard you, I protect you and I declare war on anyone who comes against you. And that's izzat and might of Allah dressing that servant based on these oceans of reality. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifu wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.